Welcome to The Apartment Guys, where we dive deep into all things multifamily investing. Our mission is to educate, inspire, and empower real estate investors to reach their highest potential. Each week, host Tate Seamer interviews high-level guests from all over the industry who are sure to bring valuable, actionable ideas that will propel your career to the next level. Whether you're just starting out or a seasoned investor, you are in the right place. And now your host, the apartment guy, Tate Seamer. What is up, everybody? Apartment Guys is here again this week, coming at you hot and heavy with a guest that is going to really be a great interview and discussion for you to listen in on. Aaron Goins is a veteran of uh, our fighting forces in, uh, in the U.S. military, specializes in educating people about VA loan house hacking and burr strategy, which we go into towards the end of the interview. He's also raising capital right now for multifamily syndications like the ones that we do uh, at Greenlight. And so we go deep into capital raising and kind of what it takes to raise capital and uh, what he's found challenging, what he kind of needs to get to the next level. And we do kind of almost a mastermind format where we brainstorm ideas and, and talk about how we can literally work together and do deals. It's pretty cool. I think it's a like, like I said, really interesting to sit in on this one. Hopefully you'll learn a ton. If you are a veteran or know a veteran of the forces or know someone who is active duty, they have access to these VA loans guys that are killer. And if you use them creatively to do a house hack strategy and then burr into uh, your next property and your next property, and by burr, I mean uh, buy, re, uh, buy, remodel, rent, refinance, and repeat. So it's a rinse and repeat version of house hacking. And we go deep into this and like, everybody should know that this is available to them if they are in the military, like seriously think about letting people know about this podcast for that reason alone. Uh, also, we are going deep into Oklahoma city at this point at green light. Uh, we've got multiple deals working there and have opportunity for partnership and uh, for really nicely uh, underwritten, uh, risk mitigated uh, multifamily deals that are fantastic opportunities. And we'd love to talk to you about them. You can go to investwithgreenlight.com and there you can sign up for uh, our investor list to get our uh, updates on deals and uh, updates from me. And you can also book an appointment to talk with me in person on Zoom or on the phone there uh, to get the conversation going about what it might look like for you to partner with Greenlight. Uh, and um, if you know somebody that may be interested in investing in apartment buildings, this is for them as well. So on that note, let's just jump right into this episode with Mr. Aaron Goins. Welcome everybody back. Another episode of The Apartment Guys. And I am privileged to be joined by Aaron Goins, today. And uh, Aaron, amongst other things, is a veteran of our, our U.S. fighting forces. And I, I can't wait to hear a little more about that. He's uh, really an expert in how to creatively use your VA loan, you 19 million veterans out there that might be listening to this, uh, use your VA loan creatively to build wealth. And that's what we're all in this to do. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, but uh, Aaron, welcome to the show, dude. I'm stoked to have you here. Man, Tate, thank you so much for having me, man. I'm very, very excited to be on here. Yeah. Yeah. So you and I know each other through a meetup group that we're, we're both members of. Yep. And uh, we've, we've interacted numerous times. And listeners, real quick takeaway right off the bat here, go to these meetup groups. Like, serious things happen at these places. You find partners, you find capital, you find deals, you find uh, property managers. I mean, it's, it's amazing the, the, the resources that are available in these groups. 
you know, the one that Aaron and I go to meets every week and there's probably 60 people, 50 people that are there every single week yep. and everybody's doing big things. Like you can't beat that and it's free. It's virtual. Like you got to be in these things. Okay. Anyway, enough. Uh, I won't grandstand. I want to span. I want to span on that. I mean, you know, yep. one thing is we live in a COVID era. You know, people yeah. are distant from each other, and yep. you know, you use technology to to your advances. You can meet a way more people online than in person now. You know, yep. so use those advances and and, and network yep. people. I mean, yeah, it, it's it's a team effort. You know, it's, yep. it's it's not a solo game. It's a team effort, especially in real estate. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll just go, I'll I'll even offer this. If you want to email me, info at uh, glequitygroup.com or tate at glequitygroup.com. I will email you a list of weekly meetups uh, to that are virtual that you can go to. And right, right off the bat, Aaron, let's talk about yours. What tell, tell the listeners a little bit about your meetup group and, and what you guys do. Um, so yeah, I've been doing my meetup um, every week since January 21st. It's called wow. All In On Real Estate. Um, and I just interview or have a QA and a session with different, uh, you know, investors talking about different issues in real estate. So we've talked about um, the VA loan, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about uh, tax liens and deeds, small multifamily, large multifamily. Mm -hmm. And, um, it, you know, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we do that for about 50 minutes. And then uh, we have uh, breakout rooms after that. And then we have something called after party where uh, people mm -hmm. just, really let the hair down and just have a good time and talk. And we, we've been on there for quite a while, man. I mean, sometimes it goes two hours, just people wow. just, just talking about real estate, talking about life and just laughing and joking and, wow. and uh, really educating each other. You know, um, normally somebody starts off by telling a story or telling something that they had in real estate. We all chime in and uh, it's a lot of fun. So I really enjoy, I really enjoy the community that that's been built. And, uh, I'm doing it every week, every Saturday. I mean, I'm sorry, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. That's uh, beautiful. All in on That's so powerful. Uh, I can't believe I haven't made it there yet. I will. I, I will get there. <laughs> yeah. I I, ha I was under the impression that you did a meetup group pretty strictly for veterans, but you you've ex you've kind of expanded that concept, haven't you? Yeah. Um. So, um. When it first started, when I first did my meetup, um, I, I had changed. I had a different name to it. Yeah. Um, because it was more centered towards veterans, but I really yeah. thought about it and say, you know, how about let's make it for everybody, you know? So yeah. I changed yeah. the name of it. Um, it used to be called last line defense. Mm -hmm. And now I, I changed it to all in on real estate closer to, to my company name, all in homes. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, this is more for everybody. It's not just for military, even though I do have my guest speakers are like um, half military or some veterans and half civilians. So Mm -hmm. um, you know, I do like to highlight, um, you know, my fellow veterans, but it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And the fact that you do it weekly, I mean, that kind of, we, we have a monthly meetup and we meet for two hours every month. We do the breakout rooms. We have the expert on, we don't do the party afterwards. I like <laughs> that idea a lot. I think that's pretty awesome. Um, and, uh, yeah, but maybe we'll, we'll implement that, but I would think that, being committed at the weekly level to doing this and getting on everybody's weekly schedule so that they know, you know, what is it Thursday evenings? Yes. Yeah. What time? 7 p.m. Eastern. Yes, sir. 7 p.m. Eastern Thursday evenings. And where can people find a, a link or more information about it? Um, you can go to meetup.com or yep. you can just, uh, you know, email me, um, Aaron.goins at Gmail. Um, also, uh, all my replays on my YouTube page. So that night after the, the uh, meetup is over with, I upload the, uh, the replay on my YouTube page. So you can look up my name on YouTube, Aaron Goins, and uh, you'll see all the replays for, for every week. So yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of work, man. It's a lot of work, uh, a lot of promoting. Uh, yeah. And, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a one-man squad. So it's, yeah. it's a lot of work, but I enjoy it. I enjoy just trying to help people out. I mean, I'm a big connector and I love helping people out as much as possible. That's why I have a, a clubhouse room as well mm -hmm. um, called the Military Real Estate Investing Hour, where mm -hmm. we basically the same thing. I mean, we, we just talk all things uh, real estate. It's not just for military, even though it says military. Um, anybody can join and everybody can join. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a good time on there too, just talking about real estate um, and trying to help people out as much as possible. So I have a, 
I have a, a loyal uh, group of moderators that, that be on there with me um, every week. And, you know, we're always trying to connect with others and help people out. A lot of a lot of newbies. We get a lot of newbies on there. And I try to make sure that I talk to every, all the newbies and try to direct them to a path. So mm -hmm. along the way. And then I, if I don't know, I can always refer them to somebody else who knows. Right. And that's what's great about these meetup groups, guys, is like everybody knows the person who knows someone or like if if the person in if your small breakout room of three, four five people can't come up with a really great answer to whatever problem question might arise, somebody in that group is going to know who to ask or who Absolutely. to go to or what you need to do or what website's going to, you know, et cetera. Like this is like people come to these things ready to connect and ready to serve. And that at least I do. And, and I know you do, Aaron, uh, you know, Brian Briscoe, our buddy that, you know, whose room we met through and, you know, right. these were, these are from the heart people that are doing this for the right reason. And the right reason is bringing people together so that we can all level up together and, all be lifting each other as, as one of us gets one step up maybe helping two others up and and at the same time he's got this conversation going on over here like you know it can get really exciting at these meetings and uh, the juices start flowing and you know you think about something that you haven't thought about in, in a way that you haven't never thought about before and it all of a sudden mm -hmm. it's a, it's moving the needle in your business right or i mean i met my my future uh, business partner at a conference. And that's a little different, right? That's not a virtual meeting. Um, that was, it was two years ago before COVID, but like, you know, like that, that was just out of the blue, one of 600 people that were at the conference that <laughs> I networked with and now we're business partners and right, we're doing right. multiple deals together. So awesome. these things like really are game changers, um, especially if you, if you come at them from a place of, uh, generosity and, and service. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. you know, just the networking and like you said, the, the creative juices be flowing because you're talking to different individuals. Now they have different perspectives and you're like, Oh, no, I didn't think about that. And, and that can really, really advance your career in yeah. your business. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So talk about, you know, we were talking a little bit before we started recording about what you're up to and, and uh, you know, you and I are, are, we're really up to very similar things right now, um, slight differences, but you're, you're currently in the capital raising world, mm -hmm. and uh, which basically means that you're, um, you're approaching folks or you know, uh, manifesting connections with, with folks or sources of capital and enrolling them in the vision of investing in multifam commercial multifamily assets. That, is that about right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we talked a little bit, you're not at this point, you're not raising for any, anything specific. You don't have any specific deals you're raising for, but you're, you're wanting to, you're, you're, you are, uh, you know, building a, a, a list of a database, uh, you know, foundation of investors that uh, you're going to be able to bring to, a sponsor's deal is that's kind of how you're setting things up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah perfect. So yeah, you know, we're doing basically the same thing, except we have, we happen to have like individual deals to raise for. Right. So mm -hmm. we've got specific opportunities that we're able to put together, you know, 40, 50 page offering memorandums with financials and projected returns and, uh, you know, business plans and CapEx budgets and all that stuff. And, you know, we, you have approached Aaron, this, this whole game. Uh, and by game, I mean, business, or I, I just, I love it. Like, I don't mean to, I like the, the word game, hopefully doesn't cheapen it. Oh, I mean, you, oh. you this whole space that we're in this business that we're in, you've approached it from a capital first, approach right. of you know making of raising capital for something so when that a deal uh comes along you have x amount ready to rock and um at least soft commits maybe on that and and ready to dig in and and take the you know the 
30, 60, 90 days that you might have to close to raise the capital, at, you know, for that specific deal. Right, right. right? I mean, yeah, I mean, so for me, um, you know, I know that when you get into like the game that you're talking about for um, multi commercial yeah. multi family, you got to have some kind of strength that you bring to the game. You know, yeah. are you an underwriter? Are you a capital raiser? Yeah. You know, can you find deals? You got to bring something to a team. And yeah. for me, yeah. I've always been a people person. I've always connected with people, I've always try to help people out. So my strength is people. So mm-hmm. um, that naturally just made me into a capital raiser. And, you know, learn all the nuances. But, you know, one thing, Tate, I learned is it's a numbers game. You know, uh, it is very, very much a numbers game because if you have, you know, 400 investors, you only have 40. You know, uh, yeah. you know, if you have, uh, you know, 2,000, you might only have 200. And then even those 200 aren't going to call you back or something like that. So you really got to continue to foster relationships um, build them as much as possible. A lot of, a lot of follow-up and, yeah. um, you know, that's something that I'm learning, learning the hard way. Um, but it doesn't deter me and I'm very excited for the future. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Numbers game for sure. Like everybody and anybody in your world, anybody that you can connect with and touch needs to know what you're up to. And in your case, Aaron, in my case, we raise capital for multifamily, commercial multifamily deals that provide solid returns to our investors, uh, solid projected returns, if you want to qualify it a little bit more, uh, and, and quality residents for our quality housing for our residents. Like that's my elevator pitch in a nutshell. And it started with, if you noticed, it started with, I raise capital for dot, dot, dot. That's my job in general, in this world right now, is putting together capital sources with really well underwritten, conservatively underwritten, um, value add, cash flowing deals with really nice upsides uh, available to them. And that's really what what we're up to. Um, you know, and the, the irony, I'm just, I'm kind of laughing because I just got done recording an episode with Gary Lipsky, who is the, the expert on asset management out there right now and re- really literally wrote the book on it. And uh, we talked about you, you're leading with capital first, I'm leading with deals first, right? And then bringing mm-hmm. capital. And Gary is like really like his specialty, his secret sauce is, is operations and asset management and getting the NOI up, up, up so that the value goes way up on, on these assets. Um, and it's, you know, there's a lot to this and that's why this is a team sport. And we say it every week, this is a team sport, like the, your, your power team. And by that, I don't mean that you need to have uh, you know, partners and employees, uh, that are, you're directly and legally affiliated with, uh, and financially intertwined and all that stuff, but you need to have a power team and you, you know, you need to have people that, you know, are there in your corner, ready to go, uh, with an earnest money deposit. If you find a good deal or, uh, you know, can jump in on capital raising or due diligence or whatever, if you find a good deal or et cetera, like that's, you need those partners in crime and whether that's part of your ongoing team or whether you're doing partners on a deal by deal basis, which a lot of people do. And that works really well also. Um, So, so yeah, so I, you know, I'm stoked to kind of just brainstorm a little bit with you and, and talk about like, you know, what you've, what you've learned, you know, so far kind of where we are and I, Mm-hmm. I'll just, I'll tell you kind of, I'll just be like, kind of cut to the chase on something here. I, I'm kind of, my thinking is I'm wondering if um, affiliating yourself with one or maybe even more than one syndicator slash sponsor that's got good deal flow and, and maybe multiple deals that, so that you have multiple options for investors. I'm wondering if that might be a good 
like next step for you? And, you know, have you thought about that at all? Because then you're, then you're raising for something more specific when you're talking. Yeah. To um, people. Yeah. People have come to me about raising capital for them. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, one thing I think good advice that I got a couple of weeks ago, I was in a breakout room with, with uh, Julianne Pearson. Mm-hmm. And she said, you know, you should really only um, raise for maybe like four teams because okay, then yeah. you're, you're in the process of, you know, you know, you, you have more of a, of, you know, more, you know, you don't have to focus on just trying to raise capital for everybody like the wild, wild west, but just focus on those four who has good, has good um, deal flow. And it's somebody you can trust and build a relationship with instead yeah. of just trying to do Oh, it's a good deal. Here's a good deal here. And, and also, I know for my investors, you know, I want to be confidently say, well, I know this team, this team, you know, instead of saying, well, I don't know, I really got to, you know, really got to bet them. But yeah. I already know these teams, we doing multiple deals together. So, yeah, um, that's a track record. Yes, sir. Yeah, nothing speaks more strongly than that. So, yeah. And, and again, this is a long game. This, this sport, if you want to call it something like other than a game, it's, 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 it's a long one, like Mm -hmm. this, and it's a relationship one. And you, you want to build a foundation and build a team and build a wheel, if you will, a machine that you don't have to recreate every time a deal comes along. Uh, You know, so you're going out and starting from scratch again, you want to, you want to find people that have the resources to make deal after deal after deal after deal happen. And those are people that are that are either A, finding lots of deals and having good, nice, healthy deal flow so that you can cherry pick the good ones, which is what we do. Um, or uh, B, finding, you know, finding capital. Um, that's, you know, that's the, the, the second, but equally important task here at putting these deals together. And the good news is in this market, and it's currently September of 2021, there are, there's a lot of capital out there right now. We, you know, the, the government just injected a lot of capital and interest rates are very, very low. And there's a lot of capital looking for uh, a, a good deals, right? Right. So right now, good deals are the premium. They're the they're what's hard to find and, you know, deals that pencil well, that cash flow well, that have a good upside and uh, are conservatively underwritten. Um, That's what we specialize in, but there, you know, we need to look at probably 50 deals before we find the one that we're going to move forward on some, maybe even more than that. Um, So, you know, that said, really like dialing in your, your deal flow and your capital raising in this business is like, that's what, that's what there is to do really. And then this third leg that we've talked about on past episodes of operations, we're not going to really get into that today. Um, cause that's kind of its own beast, but, uh, and we don't want to get in the weeds. I want to stay with capital raising. So, um, so, you know, what are your thoughts on, uh, you know, like we're, we're, and we're recording a podcast right now, but we're always doing business, right? Like, right, 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 so right. I'm like, I'm interested in working with your or at least exploring possibly working with you, Aaron. And, and so, you know, we've got like d- opportunity right now, um, right. both, you know, fairly immediate opportunity and, and then ongoing. And, uh, you know, so what, where, where are you and kind of, what do you feel like you need? Um, you know, what, if it were in place right now, what would it be that would kind of get you to that next level of, uh, of, you know, saying, doing a deal with us and bring in a million or a million and a half or, you know, more, more, maybe 500, whatever it looks like to the right. table. Like what, where do, what do we need to, to have happen to get there? Well, I think one thing for me is that talk to my coach, uh, you know, he was just like, look, uh, you know, you, you have, you have investors, but you don't have as many saw commits as you want. So Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make sure that I have as many saw commits about deals so that when I pitch them, it's not, you know, it's not a new, it's not a new thing. It's not something I've talked about them. So I think it's some internal stuff with me. I would love to, to, 
you know, um, uh, work with you guys. And, and I think that would be awesome to do. Um, you know, but one thing for me is I have to make sure my marketing is a little bit better and then also do a lot more follow-up. I have a lot of investors. I got to do a lot of follow-up over the next couple of weeks of just making sure that, you know, uh, that the relationships are, are, are solidified, um, that we're on the same page. Um, and, and I look forward to it too. Like I said, I love doing relationships with people, um, but, you know, I see that, hey, it's a numbers game. It's like you, you talking about how you, you got 50 deals, only one is good. Yeah. Same thing with capital raising. You gotta, you, you're not going to always find uh, that, that needle in a haystack where somebody's going to give you, you know, 10, 20 million or more dollars. It's most of the time it's, it's, it's a whole bunch of people giving you a hundred or fifty thousand dollars first. Mm-hmm. Seeing what your track record is first and then going from there. So, um, you know, for me, it's all about just making sure my marketing is good, uh, yeah. making sure that uh, a couple of things. And now I'm part of a couple of um, capital raising masterminds as well. So I'm getting to help, help in my way. And I'm really, like I said, I'm really excited for the future. Because I feel like um, I am, I am attaining more investors. I am building more relationships. Just gotta make sure that my soft commits are there first before I can say, "Hey, I'm ready. I'm ready to raise." Sure, sure. I do think I will say this. Um, I could be wrong, but I, I think there'll be a point at which you'll have like a, kind of a critical mass of soft commits, like more than you have now, and then you'll have an opportunity over here. And you're going to have to make the leap, right? Like you're right. going to have to like say, okay, I've got these soft commits. I know I can turn X percentage of those into investors right. and I've got 60 days to raise the rest. Right. And right. that's when you really, that's when you start digging, man, and digging hard. And, and um, so I, I personally have found and not everybody's like this and, and your, your coach and other folks would have an issue with this, but, or may have an issue with, it. I don't want to speak for him, but I, you know, I personally found that for me to say, here's what we're doing. Here's an example of what we're doing. This happens to be a deal that either is fully funded now. And we, you know, we have all the capital we need for it, or this happens to be a deal that we are, we currently have opportunity for, um, I, I found that that advances the conversation a little bit because it, be, the conversation then becomes more about like, Oh, okay. So how does that, how does that structure work again? And like, mm-hmm. okay, so there's a 60, 40 equity split. Like what, what's that mean? Exactly. Yeah, stuff like that. Like when you get into it, when you're sometimes I think getting into the weeds with people that you might want to work with actually can not it can be a positive thing because it can build some trust. Like you come across as the expert and you know, you're, you're very, you're an easy guy to talk to Aaron and you're easy guy to, to, uh, you know, to communicate with and be communicated from, and people like talking to you. I know that. Um, I know you're a popular guy in the, in the meetup group and people uh, are gonna, are gonna like talking to you. And so I think you're right, man. You, You like, you're dialed into your superpower. Um, and just from my impression of you, uh, I think that this, this people game is, is you're, you're going to be able to serve and impact a lot of lives. And, um, that's, that's what it's all about. So I'm kind of rambling, but, uh, I get excited about this stuff, you know, and, and, uh, I like, you know, now that we've done this together and everything, like I, I want to do, you know, everything that I can for you and offer you any, anything I can in the way of, uh, whatever, um, that I can offer you to, to help you, you know, really get to that next level, get to it, get into a deal and get a deal closed. Yeah. I, I really appreciate that Tate. Um, everything yeah. you said, and, uh, definitely, I think I'm definitely going to reach out and definitely have a conversation with you, man. And uh, yeah. like I said, you know, I, I think one thing is, um, and I learned from being an entrepreneur is that you got to be resilient. You know, you cannot yep. get yep. too high or too low with stuff. You can't take stuff personal too. It's a That's number right. game. You can't take it personal and it, it's all learning experience. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm learning as much as possible. Um, and, and I do have a good coach and I do, I am encouraged by others uh, like yourself. Uh, and I'm really, really, 
like I said, really um, encouraged for the future, really, um, you know, digging in and understanding that, hey, you got to put the, you know, I have a, I have a W-2 job. Yeah. I got to, you know, do both. Mm-hmm. But I, I have a, you know, I have goals I want to do. And I'm very, very um, determined to accomplish those goals. And, you know, like I said, build relationships is something I do and I love to do. And I'm going to continue to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to crush it, man. So tell me about your goals a little bit. What are you, what are you trying to get done? Well, I think that, I think most people say they want financial freedom and I want that as well. But for me, it's spending a little bit more time with my kids, uh, my, my kids now in ninth and 10th grade, uh, they're military kids. And so they've been overseas. Um, I was not overseas with them. Uh, and now they're in high school, they settle in, starting to play some sports. Uh, we're, in, we're in different states. So I definitely want to, uh, you know, go and see them more and spend more time with them. Uh, and, and, you know, especially during these high school years was real preferable. Um, uh, you know, and, we, and me and my kids are pretty close. So... Mm. You know, I really, really look forward to spending more time with them. But, you know, it's a process, you know, if, if I and I'm just determined to get to that point where we can spend a little bit more time together, where I have more freedom instead of being as, you know, doing a W-2. And so, you know, that's, that's my why. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, matter of fact, I'll be going to visit them pretty soon. Uh, spend like a week with them. Uh, you know, my daughter's playing volleyball. Mm. So really excited for her and, uh, you know, go, go hang out with my son as well. Who's playing back. Who, he, he'll be playing basketball um, this year. So how old are they? Uh, 15 to 14. Okay. Yeah, so 11 months apart. High school. Yep. 11 months apart. Yep. Okay, cool. And they're so, and where do they go to school? Uh, they go to the Tampa Bay tech in Tampa, in Tampa Bay. So. In Tampa Bay. Okay. Yep. Yep. Awesome, man. That's exciting. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and tell me, tell me about your, you know, your goal around your W2. Do you, do you, are you planning on sticking with a W2 for a while or what do you, what are your thoughts there? Uh, I want to live, live off the payment of the money that I'm making with my W2, but, you know, use my real estate for other things. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I have goals I want to do. I don't want to, my job is cool. Uh, I'm doing the same thing I did when I was in the military, and that's that's supply. I enjoy it, uh, but you know, like I said, I want I want to work for myself. I want to I want to do capital raising full time. So, okay. um, you know, I'm gonna stick with the job as long as I can, and then at some point when I'm I'm making enough money, I'm going to quit the job and, and do real estate full time. I think one thing for me was a couple of years ago, um, a one of my coworkers said, "Hey, Aaron, you know you're gonna be here for working for another twenty years." And I said, I thought to myself, I said, no, I'm not. And that's when my entrepreneur spirit came because, mm-hmm. of, because of what that person said. And I said, man, I can't, I got to get out of here. Mm-hmm. I, I done, I done my time in the military and I loved it, but I want to do another 20 years here. So. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for your service, sir, by the way. Right, sir. I have not said that or acknowledged that at all in this episode. And from my heart, I sincerely appreciate you and, and the sacrifices you and your family made for us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You bet. You bet. And, and I'll tell you like this too, and that's, this is why I'm so bullish about this. You know, you talk about how that, you know, sacrifices people are made. And that's why I'm so bullish about veterans or military using their VA loan. Yes. So no money down loan that people, only about 15% of all veterans use their VA loan. So just mm-hmm. imagine, like you said before, 19, it's about 19 million veterans in the United States. Only 15% mm-hmm. use the VA loan. It's a no money down loan that you can use to purchase a property, one to four units. And, you know, like, like right, right now, I use my VA loan uh, to purchase a duplex. I have a 10 on the other side and I, I plan on uh, refinancing. This is a year now I've been here. This, this, mm-hmm. That's the thing about your VA loan. You had to stay there for a whole year. Yeah. And what you can do is you refinance from a VA loan to a conventional loan, and now your VA loan limit goes back back up and you can purchase another property. So just imagine um, if you're a young person in the military, uh, you know, you, you find a fourplex, all right? You use your VA loan, stay there. After a year, you move out. You use, rinse and repeat again. Rinse and repeat for, let's say, you know, you, you're staying for 20 years. You can have at least seven, eight, nine yeah. of these fourplexes Boom. And 
you know, you're building, you're building, you're building generational wealth right then and there by by having all these properties right here. Yeah. You know. So, but oh, it's a man. mindset. It's a mindset. Yeah, dude. Like listeners, if you know anyone that is a veteran, or you are a veteran, or your spouse is a veteran or whoever, like they need to know about this if they don't already. And chances are they know about VA loans, but they haven't thought about it from a creative standpoint, like what Aaron's talking about here, where you essentially you're doing the burr strategy that they talk about on bigger pockets and other places where you're buying a property with nothing down. <laughs> That's awesome. And you're living in it. So it's a house hack in addition to a burr. This is, that's another term for this. So you're owner occupying it, which is what you, what's re required with a VA loan. And you're getting a very, very good interest rate, uh, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and, and your tenant, if you have, if you're in a multi-unit, if you're in a duplex, triplex, or fourplex, your tenant is paying your mortgage for you or part of it or a lot of it. Right. Or sometimes more than the mortgage. And you can then refi because and you can maybe improve the property a little bit over the course of that year, raise rents right. a little bit, do stuff like right. that. And then in a year, maybe there's some appreciation. You can refinance and into a conventional loan, right out of the VA loan into a conventional loan, which is going to be very good as well, fixed rate, et cetera. And you'll have the equity at that point to put the 5% down that's required on a conventional loan or 10% or whatever it ends up, maybe even 20, if, you, if you're treating it like an investment property, right? And then you turn around, you take that cash out that you got at the refi and you do it all over again, rinse and repeat, just like Aaron said, you do that once every year and a half, 18, I mean, is that doable? Like, you know, every every year and a half or so like every year you can every, do that year. every year yeah you can do, if, i mean if, if you if really you, you can do that every year yep 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 and, and by the way we haven't even talked about impl implications on your taxes like that's yeah. just out of control yeah. so like like this is real guys and you know we've talked a lot about capital raising today and a lot about like the ins and outs of that and kind of getting started and mindset behind it and everything else this takeaway right here hopefully i'm I'm just hoping that this changes somebody's life aaron like like somebody that, that hears this see gets that quick strategy and by the way this strategy is doable for everybody with five percent down so yep. Yep. you can house hack a single family a duplex triplex fourplex up to a fourplex with a conventional 5% down owner occupied loan, live in it for a year and, uh, and then refi out of it, keep it cash flow it, let it continue to pay the mortgage down, let it continue to appreciate, continue to take the tax advantages and the depreciation and your love and life, man, in, in 10 years, if you've got, if you've done that 10 times over, you're set, right? If you're in the right market, man, you are set. Right. I'll give you another thing too. Was Maurice Philogene? He did that. He did that. The, the very thing you talk about. He did that with condos. And mm -hmm. now, years later, he has over hundred thousand dollars of income coming in every every year because of what he the sacrifice he did in his twenties, going into his thirties. Mm -hmm. uh, continue to use his VA loan to purchase property, mm -hmm. and you know he rest and repeat it. So he said that when people was partying, he was doing toilets. He was cleaning toilets. Yeah. Repairing toilets, but now look at him in his forties. He can travel everywhere he wants because he has a residual income coming in. Yep. yep. One more thing too is, just imagine this too. Not not everybody can do this strategy. Um, and then what I mean is, like anybody can do it, but then think about this: a lot of people go overseas and things like that. Okay. Yep. But a lot of people deploy too. So a lot of people, over the course of time, they put their stuff in storage units. So if you really think about it. Think about if, if you had the capacity, I'm just department guys, but think about this. If you can get a mom and pop storage unit around a military base, that can be gold because people always are deploying, mm -hmm. always are, are leaving to go different bases mm -hmm. and things like that. So 
Yeah. Just, just to keep that keep that in mind for anybody who's into their self storage. Think about doing it around military bases. There you go. Little nugget for you self storage gurus out there. <laughs> um, well, that's awesome, Aaron. And uh, this has been really good stuff, dude. Like I I'm stoked for somebody that I you know normally we talk larger count, larger unit count apartment assets. You know fifty. 80 plus units and up to three, 400. Like that's kind of our sweet spot on this podcast. However, in service to our brothers and sisters that are veterans that have uh, served us and have this incredible tool available to them that nobody else has, uh, it, it's it, to use it creatively to build wealth is something that's very, very doable. And like, I, I'm, I'm just stoked, man. I'm, I'm really excited that we were able to bring this out into the light and talk to it, to my listeners about it. Um, because it's so important that people know about it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, I enjoy talking about it, man. I, I just want to help and encourage people. Uh, yeah. uh, and, and, and really, like I said, just get the information out there. You know, I, I, I'll tell you like this, take, I was not aware of this VA loan when I was in. I'm not saying it wasn't around, but no one talked about it in my circles. No one right. in my circles talked about real estate. And, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't use it until I got out of the military. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I just hope that people now can use it, use it, use internet, use the different uh, RIA groups you have, like um, active duty passive income and white feathers and mm -hmm. come to my uh, um, clubhouse room and things like that. People will help you. Um, for people in the military and, and on out too. And, and I'll tell you like, and one last thing, I know we're wrapping up. I went to a oh, conference good. recently in Seattle mm -hmm. and I can't tell you how many people I talked to and they had, they had limited beliefs in themselves. Mm. I said, you know, you can own a hundred plus unit apartment building and people's eyes got big, like, really? I can, yes. You don't, I think everybody thinks of doing this. You got a, you got a wholesale, then you have to do uh, fix and flipping, and then you got to do small multifamily, and then after, and then maybe get fifty to fifty units or below, and then go large. I said you can go large if you have a skill yep. set. You yep. can go large right away. That's right. You don't, you don't have to go down that that ladder like that, and people mm -hmm. just like look at me crazy. Like I said, yes, you can be part yep. of the team. Does it? Yep, yep, yep. Preach it. That's it. You do not have to scale from single family up to multifamily. You don't have to go that route. You can, we did. Do I wish we could, you know, would I reconstruct our path? Uh, not, I, ultimately, I don't have regrets in life and I'm yeah. glad that things happened the way that they did. But like, if I were advising somebody else from our experience, like, and, and, and they, depending on who they are and what energy level and entrepreneurial level they're bringing to the table, like, like you said, Aaron, you can get into a team situation where you're part of, a syndication or a sponsorship group or a GP, whatever you want to say it. And, uh, and be on the, you know, be owner of a, uh, you know, hundred plus 200 plus 250 plus unit asset. And you can do that over and over again. Right. And the key is knowing and finding and knowing your superpower right. is so key. And I'm, I'm, I'm really stoked to use that word early in the, in the conversation because finding it and knowing it is everything. And because then you can use it, it's, you know, you can have a tool belt full of tools. If you don't know what the heck's in your tool belt and you never look at it and never use anything, it's as good as not having the tools. Right. 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 You know, th this is like, yeah, use these things. So dude, this has been awesome. Um, again, so listeners it's Aaron dot goins at, is it at gmail.com? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Aaron dot Goins and Aaron is spelled A H A R O N dot G O I N S at gmail.com. Yep. So, uh, and yeah, so basically he's, he's here to help like, you know, and, and any way he can, and we're all in this together. Like I, I, my listeners, uh, you know, apartment guys nation is, is like, we're, this is a family and, and all the guests that come here know that and know that, uh, we're here to serve. That's our, a number one priority here and, and educate and inspire. 
uh, and bring resources and ideas and actionable tips and items, et cetera, you know, so that we all grow together. Right. And I, this is a very selfish endeavor for me, this podcast, because I get to hang out with people like Aaron. We get to talk shop for an hour, 45 minutes or whatever, and learn from each other, inspire each other. And I know as a, as a result of this conversation that we're going to end up doing some business together. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, for sure. Can look forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. So anything else that you'd like to offer listeners that, uh, you know, are, are looking at the capital raising aspect of this thing and, and, uh, looking at maybe getting into it. Just put yourself out there, you know, put yourself out there, uh, you know, continue to network with people, um, you, you just never know who might have money, who might be listening to you. So put yourself out there. You know, don't don't be shy. Don't be, oh, I had to have this targeted person. And what I mean is when you're talking to people, don't abide by people you don't know, you know, um, who has money, who doesn't. Uh, it might be a referral you might get from somebody. You just don't know. So mm-hmm. put yourself out there um, and, and have an identity for yourself as well. You know, some, you know, if you had no credibility, like you were saying earlier, people really not going to they're not going to take you seriously. So make sure that you make sure that you educate yourself as much as possible as well. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Aaron, I want to talk to you before I forget about it. I want to talk to you about a credibility kit soon. Okay. Okay. Do you have one of those? I don't have, I kind of leverage mine against my, against my coach. Um, I do have, you know, I have a website. I have um, a one piece paper. I have, um, a pack I can send to people yep. just talking about myself Perfect. and talk about my, my, um, my company and what I'm looking for and things like that. So that's what I mean by that. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. Uh, you know, something that's either printed or printable or p- in a PDF form that, that establish it. people want to invest with who they know, like, and trust. And you can, you can convey a lot about yourself in a website or a, six page, uh, brochure about your company. Uh, obviously not enough to necessarily sway an investor, but certainly you can provide enough context and background into you to at least get the conversation started. And I've found that our credibility kits, when we're meeting with, uh, brokers, investors, uh, et cetera, really shift the conversation and people like when you, when you, when you get, when you're at a lunch or you're at a coffee and you, you break out something like that and say, by the way, this is just a little bit about us. And mm-hmm. they start to flip through it and they're like, wow, I haven't seen one of the, something like this in a while. Like, this is pretty cool. Um, it does, it, it changes things. So, um, uh, for listeners, just quick, last little takeaway credibility kits, uh, you know, reach out to me about them. If you want to see ours, at uh, green light, I'm happy to email it to you uh, Tate at GL equity group.com. And, uh, you can reach me that way. And then, uh, again, to reach Aaron, best way to reach your Gmail, Aaron. Yes. Point? Okay. Yep. Well, come Perfect. to my meetup, come to my meetup. Yeah. yeah. Every Absolutely. Thursday, Thursday, yeah. every Thursday, seven o'clock Eastern time. The meetup is called once again, all in on real estate, all in on real estate. So go to meetup.com do a search on all in on real estate and you'll find Aaron's meetup RSVP for it so that you get the link. That's how you do these things guys. And it's that easy and it's so freaking powerful. Like I'm going to keep it family friendly, but this is, this is stuff that you, you know, if you're not doing this stuff or if, if one of your teammates is not like taking advantage of all of this amazing networking opportunity, like, you're missing out. That is all I got to say. The good news is if you're not yet, there's a universe of this out there and you're going to crush it because if you get committed to it and, and, and really dig into this networking and you've said follow up like three or four times today, Aaron, like follow ups, everything like in this world, yes. world-class follow up <laughs> yes. is everything. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so dude, thank you so much. This has been awesome. And I've learned a lot. Uh, I I'm excited now. I can't wait to get off the phone and go back to work and get, get busy doing, uh, doing our, <laughs> our deals. Um, but listen, Aaron, we're here for you. My team's here for you. Um, and 
there's like, I, I tell our listeners, we have opportunity right now for partnership and, 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 uh, you know, investing, et cetera. And, and, uh, we love to talk about it. I, you can book an appointment with me anytime on, uh, invest at Greenlight or invest with greenlight.com rather, sorry, okay. listeners invest with greenlight.com. Um, and, uh, Aaron, let's just, let's stay in touch brother and, uh, and keep moving the needle forward here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely will, man. I'm going to reach right. out to your team. Definitely. All right. And I'm, I've got, I've got 7 PM, which is 5 PM my time, which is not a bad time for me at all on Thursday. I've got that on my calendar now. So all in on real estate. I'm stoked for that. Uh, and listeners hope to see you there. If you, uh, if you go there, you know, make sure you say hi to Aaron and me and, and tell them, you know, where you, where you saw him or where you met him. Like, this is all fun, good stuff for all of us. And um, so, so yeah, on that note, listeners, thanks for listening to another episode of this Apartment Guys adventure that we're on. Uh, hopefully you're getting a lot out of this. I know I do every single week. And, uh, you know, people like Aaron just make this such a fun thing to do. So thank you, Aaron. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you, sir. Thank yep. you. Thank you, listeners. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening to The Apartment Guys with Tate Seymour. Tate and friends are grateful to have you as a loyal listener. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe, rate, review, and share with friends on your Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or any other podcast platform. Also, check out Tate's YouTube channel for videos of many of these episodes and more. Until next time, take massive action steps and rock on.